Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another installment of Ran When Parked, the show where we vaguely talk about cars that are for sale, or were for sale, that we may have bought or not. With me, Cone Dodger, <laughs> Kurt Tamak, and ZK. We're all vaguely here. Vaguely. Very vaguely here. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, some of us are more here than others. Some of us have less here than usual. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're getting right into this, aren't we? I've been bursting at the seams ready to talk about this because not only is one Kurt Max stealing all of my IPs, uh, ZK has decided that he needs to get in on the action and and, yeah. and started garage streaming. Uh-huh. You know, very professional garage streaming from my telephone. Which is... A layer of of ironic, since you are the person that was so adamant about improving my garage stream setup. Well, I just have to like it's like minimum viable. I have to like it's like the same thing I did with this podcast. I didn't buy a mic for this podcast. I just used one I had, and then I said, you know what, yeah, I could continue this. So then I got a good mic. Fair. But your garage <laughs> cleaning <laughs> turned into uh, into lathing. Which, by the way, lathes well, that, have always made me spooked. Well, the thing is, is that the garage cleaning day went perfect. Four-hour stream from my phone on Wi-Fi. No problems. Perfect. The next day, I was sitting on the couch and trying not to be a bum. And I was like, I should go do something in the garage. You know what? If I stream it, that's some that's a motivation to actually do this. Which is so funny, because start... that is the total opposite for me, by the way. <laughs> There's <laughs> nothing more demotivating than having to set up the stream to do something. <laughs> so I go out there, and my plan for the day is to like fix the little mini lathe I have. And I did that, and then I was going to grind a new tool for it. Um, just had a high-speed high speed steel blank. Um I give this whole safety spiel about wearing ear protection and eye protection, and, and as I'm grind, grinding it on the bench grinder, um, something happened and my finger slipped and went into the grinder. It all happened so fast, as, as these things usually do, that like, in my mind, between the time of you giving your safety spiel and the time that you were sprinting out of the garage, it's no more than five seconds. <laughs> it, uh, yeah. That Thankfully, happen. there was like three people watching. Mm -hmm. And there was a blood trail from the garage to the house. I but couldn't see it. Yeah, you couldn't. It was like just off. It started just off frame. <laughs> <laughs> the blood started just off frame. That's something That's that I've like, like I've put a lot of thought into of like, especially now that I'm like up here by my own and you know, there's not really anything I can do. I'm like, what do I do if I like actually hurt myself? How do I, how do I like A, get this off camera <laughs> and B, <laughs> when I get it off camera, how do I relay to people that I am or am not dead? <laughs> <laughs> that that was the worst part because like we we did i did go to the er just to get everything double checked because it was a little gross looking um and i just wanted to like go make sure get it cleaned up making sure like it wasn't also broken or any tendons you know all the stuff that matters long term um that all is fine by the way so we think mostly yeah anyway <laughs> he's fine everybody i'm fine um but because in you know the obvious rush to leave i my phone was left at home and because of the whole lockdown restrictions thing um bonko stayed in the waiting room while i went back so i just had to sit there holding my finger <laughs> with nothing to do other than listening to like daytime television and news man that that takes me back to every time i hurt myself in the 90s man it would have been really <laughs> nice to have cell phones back then <laughs> there was nothing worse than that 30 minute wait in the in the er waiting room with like you know a part of you hanging off and they're just like 
well, here's some 1970s westerns on the TV in black and white. <laughs> Enjoy. God, I, I would have killed for that. That was <laughs> that would have been so much better than what was on. Oh boy! But I couldn't message anybody to be like, yeah, uh, it wasn't actually all that bad. I still have a finger. <laughs> Oh, uh, so are you saying there's a VOD of this? There's not, no. Kurt. Oh, <laughs> it didn't have it saved. I was so mad because I went to clip it as it happened just because I really wanted to see what happened. I wanted to go like full uh, investigative discovery on this stuff, but the clip wouldn't clip and the VOD, apparently if you don't have it set to save the VODs, it doesn't even like keep the video tracking as you go along. Mm. So there was like no history of this happening this could have all been a dream at this point <laughs> yeah well i have some proof that it did people. happen <laughs> maybe that happened in your sleep <laughs> uh yeah that was, since that was my second stream ever i didn't like go through the trouble of completely setting everything up so but fods are enabled now so if i lose the other finger that'll definitely <laughs> be saved keep your Fingers crossed. Yay. Yeah, Kurt. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but I do kind of wish I did have the VOD because it's weird. Like, I don't know if it's one of those, like, brain protection trauma things where I... But I literally don't remember what happened. And Here, I'm not entirely sure. Here's what happened in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> you had the piece of steel, right? The grinder was on. Like, the bench grinder was on. And then you had a tool that was holding the piece of steel, right? Like, no, I was just holding it by, with my hands. Oh, you were just holding the piece of steel with your hands. Yeah, and like All right, this so... is something I did a couple of weeks ago for hours and hours on end. It's not really that weird to me. To, to me, you went in and you didn't have the piece of steel on the plate. Whatever happened, the piece of steel, like the, the tool steel, was not on the plate. You were above the plate. So as soon as you touched... It was on the plate, though. Because I, I had started grinding first, and then something happened. To me, it, like, it went in, it made contact, and the whole thing just, like, angled and sucked your hand into the spinny bit. <laughs> That's possible. Like, because to me, all I, I, like, heard it, I felt my hand get, like, thrown, and then I went inside. <laughs> I grabbed my finger and went inside. Like I could, Kurt. I could literally hear him on the like on the steps over to the garage door. Like in my mind, I heard "Mom." <laughs> it, was, it was that kind of run. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there you go. Shop safety, everybody. Don't just preach mm -hmm. it. It's important. <laughs> or don't talk about it. If you talk about it, something bad will happen. Yeah. Uh, speaking of that. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, I will say that Ducks, my brother, does listen to this show. And to you, I'm very sorry. <laughs> because he has been threatening to buy a boat for some time. And much to my surprise this week, he informed me that he was coming up near me to buy a boat. And I just happened to be traveling down to Florida at the same time, so he was like, hey, you might as well just, you know, follow me down with the boat. Don't buy boats, people. Boats, <laughs> boats are awful. Not only are boats yeah. awful, boat trailers are awful. Because when he got the thing here, I looked through like the brakes and everything. I've never seen so much rust on anything we've ever even had on this show versus this not even that old boat trailer. It was bad. But uh, turns out, if you're out there with a Honda Ridgeline, probably don't tow with it. Don't. Just, just don't. Don't do it. <laughs> don't, don't, don't do it. <laughs> maybe, maybe unibody trucks are really not meant for that stuff. Maybe, maybe the Japanese haven't quite figured out like actual American style pickups yet. I mean, Nissan tried to, but then they, they made Dodge do it for them. So, like, the Ridgeline, I actually have no problems with it, because as far as truck go, it's 95% of what people need when they think they need a truck. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I get it. It is. It's but like when you go and try to do actual truck things, yeah, it right. falls a little and short. The, the and problem try to cook the transmission. comes into play with the internet. 
because there's people with these trucks and they go, oh yeah, I haul my 5,000 pound camper with it all the time and it's fine. I haul this blah, 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 blah boat with it all the time. It's fine. They're probably not lying. They're only exaggerating how much they're towing because they don't want people to make fun of their not truck. <laughs> so that, you know, 5,000 pound camper uh, is actually a 3,000 pound camper. And they're like, no, it towed a 5,000 pound camper. And then some... Or it did tow a 5,000 pound camper down the street like, right. to their parents' house. And then some unsuspecting brother of mine comes along and tries to actually do these things and uh, doesn't have a temperature gauge for the transmission, doesn't even really have a real towing mode. It uh, has a, a, a transmission cooler that's about the size of the piece of ZK's finger that's missing. And <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it just didn't do it. And it was a 14 hour trip for what usually is six hours. So uh, there will not be a boat section of Randwin Park, if you're ever looking for that. <laughs> I will not boat. Yeah. Boats ruin lives. It's true. It's really true. Sorry, ducks. But I want to go on your boat. All right. <laughs> Kurt, unless you have any uh, injuries or, or <laughs> awful memories of the weekend. <laughs> no, but speaking of safety, those Harbor Freight... The, the jack stands. Car lift jack stands. Get I out. take mine back. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do uh do need to do that? I I do. I didn't. Did we not mention that on the show last time? I guess not. I, I don't think it happened last time. I was shocked to find out. I was truly shocked. I don't own any. <laughs> I thought for sure I was going to be one of <laughs> one of the people affected by this, but I don't have any Harbor Freight jacks or jack stands. It turns out. Who knew? Yeah, I I actually have one of the gray jack stands but it was one of the like older not affected ones mm. from Mine's what i'm gray too but mine are all the same the affected ones <laughs> yeah <laughs> from whatever factory batch that like i think it was a casting flaw or mm -hmm. something i think it was like a worn out mold and it wasn't making the class right yeah it's so, all check your... horrible because kurt i've i've always known that kurt hates lifting cars he hates being under cars he doesn't he doesn't trust jack stands and now this is just going to reaffirm everything <laughs> <laughs> yep i'm gonna need the most heavy duty like triple pin activated jack stands all you need is a uh quick check is that what they're called yeah quick yeah. checks quick get one get on it Kurt. <laughs> so, they're gonna more expensive than the corolla they're gonna sponsor the show they're, we're all gonna get one <laughs> it's not gonna happen just one though <laughs> just one. <laughs> Honestly, for the Corolla, that would probably do. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, check your jack stands if you're a if you're a person that jacks. All right. <laughs> <laughs> On that bombshell, let's ran when parked. <laughs> for uh, oh hey uh oh it mixed my last week's with this week's. What has gone on? Uh oh. Somebody's uh -oh. working with a duplicate template there. Huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not mine, though. Hmm. We're going back to the future. What's this week? This week is 610, Ooh. is it not? Yeah, it is. That was the right folder. Well, then... I think... Did I... Click on mine again? Click on yours. That's right. Yeah, no, those those are right. You're, I think you maybe just didn't delete last week's out of your folder let's see let's see <laughs> let's see if that's true yes all of mine are duplicated somehow you know what it'll be fine i know what we'll i got live. <laughs> this is this <Wait>. week's <laughs> what, what are we waiting for no no i just don't well, worry. I don't know either, and they don't know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> this is a 1963 Studebaker. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 63 Studebaker for sale. Needs restored. There's a title for it. Can't find it. My dad bought this car <laughs> over 10 years ago, and it's since passed away. 500 bucks. So it's you're also... saying there's no title? Well, they have it. They just can't find it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and also well, the front's at least, in the bushes. At least that's the, 
there's a chance that they could request a new title. Perhaps. Because maybe they actually own this. It's going to be hard to request it, though, when uh, they don't know what it is. Mm, mm -hmm. Also, yeah. There's not much left. I, I have to imagine that this picture is so blurry because they opened the door and were like, you know what? Not really that interested in taking this picture anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, I assume something jumped at them, so they were <laughs> moving away. Yeah. Very plausible. It does kind of look like something was living in the front seat. Those, that's a bundle of sticks that did not happen because of somebody placing bundles of sticks. <laughs> uh, those being very well reclaimed by nature. For a second there, I thought that tree was growing out of the engine bay, but... Oh, it very well. <laughs> very well could be. Um, it really it... looks like it crashed into this <laughs> bit of brush, and that's where it was left. I know, and also, like, like, the body seems, like, complete, and there's no, no, like, big wreckage or anything. Did it just, like, stop running, I guess? Probably. Yeah, it's probably, uh, well, it's not running anymore. Just park it out back, and then out back became the out back. And, uh, this happens. I don't know what it is either, by the way. It's a Studebaker. <laughs> that's, that's the best I can tell you. Four-door Stude. Yep. Got, it's got all the Studebaker-ness you could ask for, but with extra doors. I love these <laughs> plates that have become, like, just embossed. Like, all the paint's gone off of it, so it's just... You can mm -hmm. see the letters and everything. I want plates like that. If I was going to be a Wingadinga collector, that's the kind of stuff I want. Uh, that's probably a 1963 Studebaker Lark four-door sedan. Lark. Lark. What a dopey name for a car. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what'd you get? I got a Lark. <laughs> uh, that's a that's a quality Ranwin Park special right there. Kurt, I'm already interested. What do you You're already interested in Ooh. uh prepare to <laughs> get sad. That's right here. I like it. I like the fact that you ooed and this is <laughs> your car. <laughs> Uh, I know some uh, behind the scenes here. I am suspecting something. Uh oh. What? <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is a two hundred dollar seventy nine Subaru Brat. No engine or trans. No title. Mm. And the location is approximate. <laughs> <laughs> it's somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's somewhere. And that's uh, that's a pretty. Grudgy brat. Man, look at the cool designs going on in that mildew, though. <laughs> no, yeah, that's uh, like a printer. So, so, that's real bad. <laughs> that's real. The bumper is actually falling off. Like, the bumper mm -hmm. is no longer able to be attached to the metal. Yeah, it's just dangling by the hinge of the uh, tailgate. Why must you it's hurt me? At least one of the seats. Oof. What's the mm. bungee cord doing? <laughs> Keeping it from steering. So they probably, yeah. like, when they had to roll it into the bushes. Oh, man, it even had the plaid seats. It's got the forehead like grill. Well, now they're grill or a green plaid seat. Yeah, they changed from brown to green. There's a car cover, but in the driver's seat, covered with leaves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just so sad. Man, this is the that kind of car sure. you uh, you need like the the sad animal adoption music over top of, and <laughs> <laughs> for just one million dollars a day, you could save brats like this. There was a uh, actual stuff growing out of the windshield. Uh, impressive. Brain. What's really impressive? Oh. Yeah, so you got your moss there. It seems like it might have been taken by the uh, blackberry bushes i think on the last image <laughs> taken. there's some vines yeah. there that that stuff gets everywhere yeah those are those are the demon spawn of <laughs> washington yeah. state but they're delicious <laughs> they're delicious and thorny and they get everywhere <laughs> <laughs> oh and my uh suspicion at kurt is that this looks oddly like a facebook ad uh it does. I have, I have delved. Oof. Speaking of the the, the blackberry bushes, uh, I've delved. <laughs> Thorny. I've 
but they they allow you to search now, but very limited without mm. an account. Man, I really like the first gens more than the second gens. There's I don't know if the roof line changed, but there's just something about the overall shape of them that looks cooler. I, I, was it not just the front end that changed? I don't think it was just the front end. The back is different. I swear the roof line is different, but it might just be my unsatisfied desire to own one causing these feelings. <laughs> <laughs> it might be that there's no T-tops. Could be. Although I do love the T-tops on the second gen. So I've had that crazy idea of taking a second gen and like nose swapping. But, uh, oh, you hurt me so, Kurt. <laughs> hurt me so. It's got a Flowmaster, though. You Come wanna, on. We got to keep this thing going. We got, got Flowmaster just... and some multiple radiators. <laughs> you want a uh, sound comparison, ZK? So you can hear what a, a Subaru <laughs> Boxer 4 sounds like versus your Roadmaster. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well named, <laughs> ZK. <laughs> Selling all my projects in Jeeps. <laughs> There's a Jeep. The Jeeps are in a separate category. <laughs> this is this is one of those like kind of suspicious ads. Like you like you might get a little murdered. Um, <laughs> might lose the it, tip of a finger. Yeah, and the uh, whole like fever dream panic description of what is. Or maybe not for sale. Yeah. This is, as I'm reading, it's getting weirder. Yeah. 1983 GMC van V8 automatic ran and drove and parked. Want to clean the yard up, but not giving any v a thing away. Email for prices <laughs> unrest. Just added pics. Old pics, but pics. 83 <laughs> GMC van is beige and $1,000. Sorry, the camper shell is has been with me for a long time. NFS. Need for speed. <laughs> Also have a 64 Willys Jeep Traveler for sale. It has the barn doors in the back for 2000 Very rare. Also has 302... <laughs> it just goes on. Well, it goes on to like... Uh, let's see. Hot I like rod, the last Not for the faint of heart. Bare bones hot rod, $10,000. Selling complete vehicles for parts or whatnot. Like, is that all one sentence? Is this all one thought? What's going on here? <laughs> I am also putting my 67 Plymouth wagon for sale, $1,000 as as is, or I can get it running and sell it for two times that. Can he, you, he though? Also knows. And th oh. if you go back to that first picture, there there's something here that's a miss. Is it the sure caravan? That, I'm pretty sure it's the snow. Oh, it is snow. Real cold this day in a, Texas, huh? Uh, <laughs> yeah, from where this... <laughs> Supposedly was. I don't think it snowed that much in like 20 years. <laughs> I think I see back there some doors that might be... No, those look like Chevy doors. We're good. You don't have to contact <laughs> them. <laughs> There's your... Uh, this is a hot rod, huh? Not from yeah. the faint of heart. But, you know, the pictures are two years old. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's bad. Mm -hmm. In that hood scoop, that even, homemade. Even Powers won't like this. <laughs> <laughs> he likes anything. Ooh, but they got they got handyman services. Mm hmm. Oh, you know how it, you know it's a hot rod. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. I always my question when I see posts like this. Is it actually the person that owns the stuff posting the ad? Or is it an angry neighbor, an angry spouse, or like just somebody inherited this land and is like, holy cow, <laughs> this is a disaster. I, um, like the way the description is written, it seems like the person knows what's there which usually doesn't happen for like someone who inherited a lot true they also seem to be spastic i was going to use harsher terms but that's fine <laughs> <laughs> i was going to use much much harsher terms speaking of harsh terms i have to fix the mistake that i made 
no, I don't. I'll just skip it. You remember last week's, though? That was a pretty car. I still want it. Um, let's see. Speaking of want it, you want a Barkus B1000 East German truck? You know what it is? It's a Barkus. That's about all I know, too. But I know <laughs> that I want it. You can skip all the information. Look at that face. <laughs> that is that is just the most adorably dopey looking front end that I've ever seen. And it speaks to me and I need it. <laughs> I guess I'll haul things. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you want me to move that? It's really going to think that because it has a 1000cc two-stroke three-cylinder engine also. <laughs> For what is not that tiny of a truck. The wheels no. seem way tinier than they should be. Like for the wheel wells arches, right. <laughs> it just seems like they've accidentally put shopping cart wheels on it. <laughs> I don't know anything do, about it. I do like the style of trucks with the uh, like bed, the bed sides that fold down on all, all sides. Kurt, we should know what that's called. They're all over in SnowRunner, but I can't remember what they're called. Rail side? Is it rail side? Maybe? Sure. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> the old floppy sides. It also looks, it's either fiberglass or very Bondo to metal. You see how it like. It looks like a wavy. primer job. It's very wavy though. Like there's a lot yeah. of. Yeah, about it. But it's just a dang cute. <laughs> 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 I don't want it. <laughs> And they, they, they want not, I don't know if they actually want 3775 but uh, they say they have $7,500 in it, which seems excessive for what they have here. Where'd, where'd it go? Right. Like, for $7,500, <laughs> I could buy some pretty nice looking boards for the side of it. He, he had many complications in getting it across international borders with high customs fees. Well, but I want to know why. Like it worth it. Yeah, I want to yeah. know why a vehicle from East Germany purchased in Hungary brought here. <laughs> That's, there's got to be a really interesting story. And then, like, two years later, you go, ah, never mind. I don't really want that thing. <laughs> uh, it's it also doesn't say what year it is. I don't but... know. Hopefully, I bet you. I bet you there's somebody out there that's going to give us all the information we could ever want about this. And Google? I look forward to it. Nah, better than Google. Because <laughs> Google. Barkus? It's, it's uh, Officer Barkus. <laughs> <laughs> Blong, okay. Kurt, J Mac. Me. <laughs> that first line. <laughs> Can't believe I'm selling it. Can't <laughs> believe it's not butter. Uh, not that I'm turning into a pickup truck person, but a 1970 Toyota Hilux for two thousand dollars, little blue as it's known, um, just a very old truck. <laughs> it's just a very old um, truck. Yada yada yada. It's about as sporty and luxurious as a tractor. It would make one hell of a rat rod lowrider. <laughs> for a while he thought he'd airbag it um yada 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 driven every day mileage is unknown cheap old respay spray um, <laughs> always spay and neuter your trucks <laughs> you, spay and neuter. Um, yeah, you know all the people with the truck nuts not that <laughs> not this one it's, it's a first gen allegedly yeah i don't think i'm very familiar with this nose no yeah i don't know that i love it I don't like it. It's not. <laughs> it's not pretty. I yeah. like everything but the front. Yeah, I mean the rest of it's kind of the rest of it's just up. like standard seventies. Those blinkers are amazing, though. They were added. Uh, I Obviously. bet you they were added from the factory. <laughs> mm. I bet you. I bet Maybe you they, they made these, and they were like. They want blinkers over there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What does that love tell them we need to have? Because these tiny little trucks, like, in Japan would have been, well, this would have been a bigger one over there versus, like, the unibody ones. But still, they were, they were like, actual 
farm trucks and stuff like that. They didn't always yeah. have to follow, you know, r road rules. And then they brought them over here and people were like, I'm going to take it on the highway and put a camper on it. <laughs> it doesn't have any mirrors. Nope. <laughs> It doesn't really have much of anything. Also weird. It, oh, uh, really? Really just does not have much of anything. <laughs> it is bare bones. There's not even a dash. Like, mm -mm. it's just... Well, it's like a stamped steel dash, which is kind of cool, but well, it's I'm like saying, so look tiny. how shallow it is. Yeah. <laughs> like, it reminds me of like from the classic minis. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like the gas pedal. It's just a yep. Just a stub. Just, just, just a stub. Just don't miss the stub. Does that seat make anybody else feel really itchy? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like the stuff that they put underneath carpet for padding. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's a it's a beater. How much did they uh, for two thousand dollar though? I could, I could get behind uh, that. No. I bet you if you dumped it, the nose would look a lot less dopey. Maybe. I'm also curious what engine it has. They don't have any engine information. Probably tiny. It's probably like that 1.2 that came in the, the non 2TC Corollas. Mm -hmm. Who knows, though? So. Yeah, I don't think I've ever yeah, seen one weird. this old. See the dots and stuff also, from this age. I would think it would be, because it's also... Well, he says it's a Hilux. I don't know if it's a Hilux or a Toyota pickup. Because um, the Hiluxes never were in the U.S., but it's left-hand drive. Yeah, I think people refer to the early Toyota pickups as Hiluxes because they were Hiluxes. They just weren't sold as Hiluxes. Yeah. But I'm guessing this is, like, way before 20R territory for the engine. But who knows? But who knows? It either it has either a 2R or a 12R. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's like 10 more R than the other R. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. For the North American markets, an 8R. Uh, uh, 1800 CC. It's with 97 horsepower. Probably, probably about the same driving experience as the Corolla then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> same suspension and everything. Right. <laughs> uh, it's, it's neat. It, it's, it's another one of those like, if you had a property or you lived out in the country, it'd be a, it'd be cool to have, but not for not for Kurt J. Mac, I don't think. No, no, not at all. That's it's neat though. Neat. Click. ZK, you uh you feeling all right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me preface preface this by I don't like F bodies really. But anyway, like any F body, uh, it comes and goes. But having <laughs> tried to work on them, they're not fun to work on, and they all need work. But this one specifically is a '95 Camaro Z28. Um, near me or nearish me, with a LT4 out of the Corvette with a stroke. So it's a 383 or a, I think that's like a 6.3 liter versus the stock I'm sorry. five seven. Are you saying that that's got a Corvette motor? <laughs> <laughs> yes, with a six speed manual transmission, that would be perfect for the Roadmaster. Mm. Because it is, he goes into all the mods and stuff on it, but honestly, it's a mild build. Like it doesn't have a huge cam in it. Yeah. It, it runs pump gas. You could just drive it and be fine. But I think like a stroker motor for the um, Roadmaster would be about perfect. Either that or like a modern LS type thing. But you know, I don't a know. Nice I'm, I'm reading these specs, and that's it's not a it's not a. <laughs> I don't know if it's a daily driver engine. No, it is because like that cam he's talking about is the GM Performance quote unquote hot cam. That on every forms, people are like, it's a waste of money. It's <laughs> barely better than stock. Why would you buy that? Mm. Okay. Um, it does have increased compression and like some head work, but nothing that really seems undrivable. I mean, I would have to go test drive it, but he claims 450 to 500 horsepower. 
And that's the other thing. Like, he lists the prices of, like, how much it costs. Mm-hmm. And it's true. I cannot build a similar engine, just the engine, for what he's asking for this. I mean, I hate to break it to everybody. That's always true. <laughs> yeah. If you, if you build a car, if you build an engine, if you build anything, you're never going to get the money out of it that you put into it. Mm-hmm. So for six grand... Ooh. And it already has the transmission. That's a yes. death and cage if I've ever seen one. Sketchy cage. Good which for Lord. better or worse. It's one reason not to keep the car, like the shell. I'm looking real um, close because I'm not really familiar with what the LT4 is versus an LT1. So I'm like, they are all those didn't basically they? the same. Um, it's mostly like heads and compression, and the LT4 had four bolt mains instead of two bolt. Still Opti Spark, though. Otherwise, it's basically the same. Hmm. Interesting. Is this what but the it, uh, Impala SS had? No, the, the Impala SS has the exact same engine as the Red oh, Master. So one. Okay. Yeah, the, the B bodies had, I think, lower compression or just a milder cam and the iron heads versus the F bodies and Corvette got aluminum heads. I will say one thing about this generation Camaro. They are one of the worst looking cars when they deteriorate. Yes. Like when these things start to get rough, they they turn from like kind of a eh design to a oh design. <laughs> Especially when you add a cowl hood to them. Yeah. They but the idea would be to take this, strip all the parts I care about off of it, then like list the shell for 500 bucks and if it doesn't sell in a month scrap it it's a good idea but uh you don't want to buy you don't want to buy uh, an engine and a drivetrain off of somebody that's a bold liar you know how i know they're they're a bold liar t-tops do not leak they are <laughs> hey, liars they can hey, not be trusted are taken in the rain okay? you'll note that the picture of the interior has water and it's already dry outside <laughs> <laughs> there is water on the cage <laughs> okay maybe it's like when in like the northeast when they list cars for sale without rust they, yeah <laughs> yeah so so they don't leak but what they mean is they don't leak a lot they don't leak <laughs> they don't leak but the carpet just happens to be stained there <laughs> Also, that has the Z28 dash or the cluster that I could swap in. Oh, no, really? That's good part. Gosh, you got to love GM yeah. parts bin, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but the rest of the car is just trash. Yeah. Is that something you would actually do? Or do you... It's... I feel like you might ruin the Roadmaster doing something like that. That is something I'm worried about. Like... Basically, the only thing I want out of the Red Master is burnouts when I want them. <laughs> <laughs> On-demand burnouts. On-demand. But I think, like, a 383 is probably a decent way of doing that, because it mostly the stock stuff, so, like, stock wiring and all that, that's fine. I, I feel know. like you'll be better off and you'll be happier if you did something like that yourself instead of adopting somebody else's failed project to make into your project. Yeah. I, I know it's, it's going to cost more, like, but... Yeah, it would cost significantly more. And if I do do it myself, it's going to be like, you know, an LT1 out of the latest generation Camaro mm -hmm. or something. Or a, uh, whatever the, the, the quad cam LT was. Is that the LT5? Oh, the are so expensive. Yeah, The cares? LT5 or whatever they are. <laughs> It would make cubes they're unhappy, still, and that makes me happy. So they're so cool, but they're not good, and <laughs> they're they're so rare that they're like just trying to find one is super expensive. But that would be cool, like a stock one of those, like the quad cam ones. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. All right, it's time. I am also on this podcast. It's time to realize <laughs> that I did not. Uh... Is there only one picture? No, there's two. Okay. Well, what happened? I feel like my my files actually got like merged and melted together here. 
Did you did you say not don't replace? <laughs> you probably maybe didn't say <laughs> replace. But there sh it shouldn't have overrode anything. I, I, Google Drive kept messing up when I was trying to download this. I think there's enough information here that we'll get by. Uh, this is the most mild thing that uh, exists. The 2002. I like it. Daewoo Lenos S. Remember Daewoo? It's the sporty version. <laughs> Where are they actually? Uh, so or, or, or is it a Daewoo? Because I thought Daewoo kind of. was like the GM branch of Suzuki or something. So here's here's why I thought that this was mildly interesting. Because Daewoo was a brand. They had a few cars. They were basic economy cars. And it seems like Daewoo... A, a South Korean car company kind of got purchased or, you know, was bought into by GM. And GM started to, like, steer them in a direction that Daewoo, the engine that's in this car, has an engine that is purchased the rights off of Opel to build their own version of it. And theirs was the first generation Ecotec. And this had an E-Tech in it, uh, no eco. <laughs> and then after this, Daewoo starts building the second gen Ecotech engines for the Chevrolet Cruze and the Daewoo Cruze. And basically Daewoo just served this very short stopgap between Chevy buying them merging their cars with Opel and then using that to be the cheap cars that are Chevrolets that kind of saved Chevrolets but in the early you know, 2010s and stuff like that how many cruises were cruising around it's it's interesting it's it's like a a band-aid of a car company that existed yeah didn't they uh what was it uh because they did do something with Suzuki also, because like they had the Chevy Tracker. Mm. Was there a uh, there was all... Yeah, there there was some weird branding in the early two thousands where they were. We don't have any cheap, good, small cars. Let's buy them from Korea and other places and this, brand them as Chevys. That makes me just giggle everywhere. <laughs> the... Ecotech, uh, drop the CO. <laughs> <laughs> E-Tech. Oh, it's, got, it's even got a Honda battery. Honda this is battery. just, it's a very confused car. <laughs> it's so simple. Like, I oh, I yeah. think my interior picture is is gone. This looks like the Merker. Yeah. <laughs> From last week. Uh, the ad is is quite funny because they're, they're very uh, upfront about how crappy it is uh it's a very reliable vehicle i believe it will last longer than a nokia phone <laughs> <laughs> uh it's uh it's cheap and that's kind of what i was i was curious of like what are today's super cheap you know basic cars that everybody's forgotten about uh kurt you had an interesting one that suzuki sx4 i think yeah uh, sx4s good. are actually really good yeah but they are, I was just curiosity looking around for like, what's the cheapest things that are around that are newish? Those are like only eight to 10 years old and they are in the like one to $2,000 range. Yeah, because Suzuki doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. <laughs> in, in the US. So it's like, it's a Daewoo, which is rare because they only existed for a little time. They all got crushed and <laughs> they really didn't have anything interesting. But uh, you could still be like, I have a rare car. <laughs> <laughs> it's a collectible. If you say so. Put it on Doug DeMiro's uh, Bring a Trailer competitor. Topical. He, what? <laughs> oh, you didn't hear I about this. No, I did not. I don't, I don't keep up with the... Uh... He started Industry a uh, goings ons. Yeah. Uh, auction, car auction website. I forget what mm. it's called. I don't but... remember either. It's basically bring a trailer without the magazine articles about the cars. Ah. <laughs> yeah. So Craigslist. <laughs> uh, it, it's like Craig's, Craigslist it's plus a... auction, but I don't know. Because it is bidding based. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to make out of that one. 
We'll we'll put that in the news later when we understand what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Mild us, Kurt. So mild. Speaking, you already mentioned our SnowRunner expeditions. How about bringing that to the real world with a 1952 Tucker Snowcat for $15,000? You can have a... Those aren't even tank treads. What would you even call those? Those are like chain treads. Yeah, they're like, they're like what you would expect Tr- in like an excavator. Yeah. It's no tracks. Uh, it's got a new fuel tank, 36 gallons. Um, very, it's greased and ready for the next owner. Ah, good. The heater works. It runs on six volt though, but it'll be pretty easy to convert to 12 volt. Uh, no trades though. No ah, trades. Dang. <laughs> It's a manual. I uh, I just never expected you to become such a cat person. <laughs> <laughs> such a cat lover. Mm-hmm. You just, it, when you least expect it. Oh, look at that face. <laughs> it's got a face. It's got whiskers. It's so narrow. It's very narrow. Purpose? Don't know? No. Oh, it's, it's got snow. a yeah. bench seats in the back, so it'll take you to where you need to go skiing, snowshoeing. A piece of OSB for the floor, that's great. Yeah, like, snowcats are a thing, and they're used in heavy snow to, you know, keep stuff moving when everything's literally frozen. You've got your normal speedometer and your snow speed. Is mm. snow speed different? I guess. I just now noticed that. Is <laughs> Is it like uh, nautical miles an hour versus... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is on water, technically, I suppose. Is it actually a boat? These are the questions. These are the questions that we cannot answer for you. Also, fuel, amps, heat. <laughs> 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 that's uh, That's a thing, Kurt. That is a thing I found. 1952. I did not buy it. Why not? I don't know. It's just, uh, it, that one got away. I'm trying to figure out the steering. I think that whole front end just steers as one yeah. fell swoop. Probably. Like, because the, the, it pivots like here at the center right. of what looks like a regular straight axle. But I imagine it only steers, you know, a few degrees either way. Hmm. Oh, it's, hmm. oh, yeah, because there's a drive shaft going front and back, so it's four-track drive. <laughs> <laughs> you, you got, when you're running snow, engage that diff lock. Who would be the type of person to buy this? Like, I understand why companies and, I, like, industrial applications, but, like... I was thinking, why, like, a why is ski resort. Craigslist? Like a ski resort yeah. or something like that, like to take tourists around and be like, look at this experience. Give us $4,000 and we'll take you on a snowcat tour of the mountainside. <laughs> I don't know. Is that, is that what rich yeah, people you're, do? You're, you're probably right. <laughs> I feel like that's what rich people do. <laughs> <laughs> this is a rich... When, when they've bought all the fancy cars, they start branching out. <laughs> they, then they're in a landlocked place surrounded by snow and they can't get a boat. You get a snowcat. <laughs> Suck it, ducks. <laughs> <laughs> boat shaming right here, right now. Uh, uh, ZK. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. well, not what I thought. <laughs> Keep Go on. Go ahead. So when I was looking, because, you know, I was just absently searching for 383s, um, I ran across this on eBay, like, right before the auction ended um it is a also a 95 chevy camaro z28 except for this one was built by callaway and did you know that the first chevy c8 was a camaro (laughs) i did not know this because this is the callaway c8 Mm. um it Ended up not hitting reserve for eleven thousand dollars, and I just went to the dealer's website, and they were asking forty three thousand five hundred. Does that say forty three thousand five hundred dollars? 
<laughs> yes. They only they they literally built like just a handful of these things. But thank God for that. Said, <laughs> now I was going to say I don't like F bodies, right? Mm -hmm. Like I think they kind of look a little weird. I don't <laughs> think this looks worse than it did. You don't think, think this it, looks worse? No, I, I think the front end is a little meh. All right, Kurt, I need overall, an independent opinion on this. Overall, I think it looks okay. Like, and actually, it is an aerodynamic oh. body. It does it did work? Like, it actually went faster. <laughs> it went faster. Five horsepower. I know. I, no. It's like it's trying to be like a supercar, but yeah. it is definitely not. Like that, but yeah, that's like a Lotus was. front end. And it's got the side vents that are kind of cool. I, I really like what they did to the back, though. The I back's think it's really fine. Good. The sides are fine. The front is. See, look, Calorie Car C8. Bad. <laughs> like, real bad. I think it was growing on me. I think I originally went, Ugh, and then I was like, eh, it's not worse than it's not worse oh, than an man. F body. Look at this is these are like the original headlights in the original location, yeah. a foot behind where these headlight plexiglass things are. Yeah. I thought that was kind of funny. That's a that's it a comes solid, with Callaway though. honker. Callaway, I feel like never really made anything that looked good. No, but the rest of the car is kind of interesting, especially if you like read about it. Like it's it's an interesting car, or at least mildly so. And that front end just looking like a little, little cute fish. Yeah, it it looks like the front end of an Evora. Like if it stopped right here, you could kind of be like, oh, that's a Lotus Evora. And then it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and then you realize it's Camaro. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this was this is not the cheapest way to get a 383. <laughs> um, apparently, there wasn't a huge eBay market for it, huh? Seven bids to forty four hundred dollars, forty five hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. They, they, I think it got relisted. No, that was something else. I got relisted, but it, it only got bid up to eleven grand for something that is rare and debatably historic, like has some historic significance. It's tough but because Callaway never really became a thing. Yeah, it never like, really took off. Like, it never became a Celine. It never became a, a Roush or anything like that. They did yeah, things. They did cool things. But they never did anything that people were just like, that's the coolest thing ever. I got to have that. There was always just kind of one of those things that they would put on a page in a magazine of like, and here's what Callaway did this month. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're also the ones that made like the wagon conversion for the Corvette. Possibly, yes. Yeah. Well, that, so that was that was neat to just kind of run into something. All right, best ads of the week. The uh, the downfall of of YouTube's polls on cards. Best thing that ever happened to best of. <laughs> <laughs> We went from having like 20 votes to having 200 votes. <laughs> so uh, apparently from now on, there will be a straw poll to, to vote on in the comments. It'll be like the pinned comment on the video. Uh, last week's, we had Kurt's truck barbecue bench. <laughs> ZK's parts of a car. <laughs> And exploded pretty easy. My uh, Fast and Furious van. <laughs> and the winner is uh, that that snake gets me every time I see this picture. <laughs> the winner is it's me. Wow, you won one. I I'm, won I'm one. Proud of you. Thank you. I'm proud. Thank you. Eighty-two votes. Uh, second place was ZK and his disassembled vehicle. And Kurt, apparently, apparently the the truck into furniture only lasted one week. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. An old, old joke. Old, <laughs> old bag. Yeah. <laughs> but if you look, 173 votes, 60 percent, 37 percent, 47 percent. That actually adds up to 100 <laughs> percent. Suck <laughs> Even it, Google. Even better than YouTube. 
Uh, thank you, everybody, that uh, voted. And uh, thank you for, for making me... Google, shut up. I don't need you. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh thank you for for letting me know i should still be finding good stuff for best of because i could still win but now i got oh boy that's an old one too like okay i think this is this one best of quiz yes it's one of these subaru for fifty five hundred dollars <laughs> didn't you start with a studebaker something or other yeah it's kind of my <laughs> my flavor of the week uh it's a five lo or sorry Five lug XT6 hubs, 3.7 LSD, full time four wheel drive, dual range locking center diff, EJ223, brass dual core EA82T radiator, 1010 or 100,000, no, 11, oh, it's one of those numbers. <laughs> I'm good with numbers. 110,000 miles. Pro tip. You'll have to know what this is if you want the chance. The chance. So it's like a raffle. It is. <laughs> 2001 Outback Run Drive Stop needs front struts. 1600 firm. I guess that's the car in the background. Yeah. yeah. The you're allowed. To, you're allowed to buy that. You're allowed to be told what that is. But whatever the Subaru Alliance vehicle is. You gotta know what this is if you want to buy it. I've never seen one of these. I assume it's a GL. I assume it's a GL coupe of like the later generation brats. Yeah. It looks a lot like the XT6, but not as low and cool. Yeah. But like the same era. That's uh, that's all the pictures we get too. So if you want <laughs> more information on on what this is, you're gonna have to do the research yourself. That most generic 80s front end that every single car had. It's, it's genericness is not helping this owner's uh, case of, I don't know. Like, this, this looks like an actual automation build where you just pick all the stock fixtures and you don't resize or move them. And you just like, it needs headlights, <laughs> it needs taillights. Okay, here's a car. It's kind of neat, though. If the owner wasn't a jerk, I would be interested. <laughs> right, right. Those wheels are awful. And wheels are awful. The suspension is too high. And... I mean, you. I think if you rallied it up a little bit, it would be cool. I could even call this a Kurt J car. A Kurt? Yeah, maybe. It. Hmm. <laughs> no? All right. I'd rather have that XT6. There's, there's something about it that is like telling me like right under the skin of it there's like a layer of nightmares could be and what does subaru alliance mean is this like a is this is this another car that's been merged into subaru or you're it, not allowed to know unless you're part of the alliance that's car. what i was wondering <laughs> if it was like some kind of club of this subaru and if you don't know what the subaru alliance is you can't have it <laughs> rule number one can't talk about it Subaru Alliance. Like the <laughs> Colorado version of the Masons. <laughs> All right. We got some uh, some marquee cars here. Yep. some Quite a few of them. 14 to be exact. Uh, Ooh, much like ZK's first uh, post today, uh, we have somebody who bought a house or some land that happens to have 14 Datsun Z project cars. Um, and right. they're calling it a field of dreams. No parts, take the whole car or nothing. Huh. And they have titles for all of them. Wow. Uh, we've got... Oh, oh sorry. sorry. Yeah, go ahead, go <laughs> six, ahead. Six 240Zs, two 260Zs, six 280Zs, uh, and uh, a, a 280, two plus two, and, and a 280ZX somewhere in there. Some they, they were all driven to the present site, so kind of a ran when parked, but will need to be trailered. All right, so we got uh, <laughs> that's that's some thicket there. Yep, that's in some some. Bushes. This is like the Porsche guy, but with something cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's the Pontiac too in the mess. 
Oh, uh, yeah, like a Grand Prix. Grand <laughs> Those pop up whenever you least expect it. <laughs> There's the 280ZX. These are these are some nice looking projects, actually. Yeah, they're not. They don't look terribly rusty. Seven for some reason. Uh, yeah. Reverse. How how you how you get here is the question. <laughs> like I love cars. I love 240s. I love you know specific cars. Yes, I've had seven 240SXs, but like. Not at the same time. Not at the same time. And I don't get any enjoyment out of just, like, buying a car and going, huh, well, that's cool. Maybe I'll get another one, though. <laughs> As someone with nearly 14 cars, they're at least all different. But but none of them are like, good is the problem. Why these, wouldn't you want... ZK was these, referring yeah. to himself. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I like, I, I, I have a lot of cars, but... They're all different and, you know, not the same model range. <laughs> it's like the one guy that owns, like, all the Corvettes. Yeah. Oh, snake got him. Yeah, this is, this yep, is snake weird. got him. <laughs> so which one did you buy, Kurt? Yeah. Ah. I saw that you looked at this, like, 30 minutes after it was posted. <laughs> Check often. Um, I did not buy any. This is this is scary <laughs> stuff right here. I'll, the black one with the louvers is pretty cool. I do but, like the louvers. Uh, that's that's a, a bent louver, is that a bent louver? Two sixty? Is that a two sixty? It's or? real hard to tell a two sixty from a two eighty or a two forty. The the tail lights look are like in sad configuration. Right. I don't know. Yeah, I don't really know. The the differences are very subtle between the two forty mm -hmm. and two sixty. I'll take any of them. But uh, you can have them. Have in your yard. I would take. I would take one of them. Let me. Let me be clear. <laughs> get, you gotta get a matching pair. <laughs> you don't want it to be lonely. Cause yeah, I think these are all reasonably restorable. Looking at them, I've just come to the realization that Kurt is 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 not and never will be the restore a car type. <laughs> yeah. No, not certainly not with my my current. And forever, what I assume will ever be my my capabilities, both personal and uh, like <laughs> garage and like size. the jack stand thing. <laughs> and, oh yeah, and the jack stand thing. It's very that's set on back like two those. or three years yeah. at least. Yeah, I'll need you're to gonna have to get up three. under these things. <laughs> <laughs> so a collection of Z's, an actual field of dreams. That's probably mm. really a field of nightmares. Uh, ZK, stepping on your toes Speaking here. of Z's, um, this one's interesting because it's not technically an ad, but it will be for sale. Uh, um, and this was to me by, like, a friend of a friend of a friend. They, like, I didn't just run across this. Someone actually, like, reached out yeah. to me and was like, hey, I get those of, friend? like... My friend said that uh, he had a friend, and I think you're that guy that said he likes these weird cars. <laughs> <laughs> but let me just read this. Um, Every now and then we hear stories of barn finds and incredibly well-kept cars from fellow enthusiasts. Well, this is one of them. This thing is beyond immaculate and has been preserved, hidden away amongst a large collection. Owner's grandfather owned a Datsun dealership and kept this thing since new. It is going to be serviced and then headed to auction. I have no clue what realistic dollar amount he'd take for this absolute time capsule, but he's in Baton Rouge. Once I know it's the heading to auction, I'll post a link to it. Check out the odometer. So spooky this is a picture. yeah spooky garage. <laughs> That's not actually a garage. It's like a hangar. Yeah. And it's nice. <laughs> and they didn't find it. They knew it was there the whole time. <laughs> um, but Ooh. it's a... A 1980 280ZX that is literally perfect. Yeah, that's uh, that's you could eat off of it status right there. That guy's yeah. about to check to see if the flashlight works. Mm. Yeah. That looks like but, an OEM battery even. It is. Oh, and it's got the cool two-tone. Mm-hmm. And the two-tone wheels. That's like... Oh, it's the tenth anniversary one. That's why. Yeah, this is like yeah. the best two eighty ZX, <laughs> which 
unfortunately isn't like really saying that much but wow that is like new that's a picture you can smell mm -hmm. so much vinyl Window stickers. Hmm. Original, like, wait. Oh, Chevrolet Datsun dealership. Now that's a pairing. <laughs> huh. Old Jerry Lane. All those decals are gone. Like, you'll never find those original decals because they were just crappy vinyls. 932 of 3000. That's pretty neat. Did we see the odometer? I haven't seen it yet. I'm, oh, there it is. Okay, finally. 11 ah, miles. 11 miles. <laughs> so it was literally just driven or taken off the lot, put it in under a car cover in this garage, and left there. You so it usually... never got to enjoy life. Yeah, usually I get really real sad. upset about that. Like, this thing was made and then not used at all. What a waste of resources. <laughs> like, <laughs> we've we've just put a lot of strain on the world to create this vehicle for it to not even be used. But it would like it was an anniversary edition and all that stuff. And, and like it was like the guy owned a dealership, so mm. like I I, I get I, it. One thing I do like about these is that sometimes it's difficult to tell why people like or like why a car got popular or cool or whatever. Because like we see in Kurt's previous ad where they're all rusty and kind of gross. But when you see what they look like when they were actually brand new and pictures that are from this century. Yeah. You're like, oh, I kind of get it. Yeah. Like, like when you see in like a 2000 Corolla and it's like the paint's falling off and like why would anybody ever pay money for one of these? Mm -hmm. But then you see it like a brand new uh, show quality one or you know showroom quality one and you go oh okay now I understand. Right. Yeah I think I, I had a lot of disgust for the 280ZXs for a long time but I think that's mostly because to me they were cars that were in people's yards fading and gross and like the the lawn was consuming them you never really saw the nice ones mm -hmm. but to see one that's like original and nice it's it is sure it's not quite as pretty as a as a 240z but it's still a pretty cool car and and really for for the time pretty nice mhm mm I do wonder, just in general, with these 11-mile, 40-plus-year-old cars or whatever, like, what needs to be fixed in it? Oh, yeah. Uh, Everything that's rubber has to be replaced. Right. Um, all the gaskets are probably dried out and don't work, so it probably leaks the first time you try to start it. It's a nightmare, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. As nice as it is, unfortunately, this is a car that you can no longer use. The, the, if you tried to use this car now, you're going to ruin it. Well, yeah, there's that too, but also like, but I mean, literally, if you try to drive it, it will right. Fall I mean, apart. because of that too. Like, if you try to drive it now, everything is going to spray everywhere. It's going to leak everywhere. All these hoses are going to deteriorate. This one actually looks a lot better than many I see. I don't know how they preserved it, but like, the vacuum lines and stuff don't look all gross and disgusting. So. They had it in one of the bubbles that we had yeah. way back. <laughs> yeah. The bubble boy, yeah. <laughs> bubble boy. Could be. Yeah. But it's it's certainly not like you're just going to buy it and, I got a brand new car from 1980. Right. Oh, I got <laughs> yeah, you could not drive this off the lot. No. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it'll fetch ridiculous money. On Doug Demuro's new website. Hey! <laughs> Call back to things we don't know about. <laughs> You know the name of it. <laughs> All right. Very, very uh, varied 
in different ways for best of this week. Make sure you look down in the comments below for the straw poll on how to vote. And let us know what you thought the, the best of find of the week was. Uh, thank you for staying tuned to our weird rambles today. And <laughs> I hope that you uh, are finding your own weird projects out there. I feel like this is the time of year that a lot of stuff starts to get sold again. This is the summer yes. is is like prime time for sliding stuff. I don't know why. To me, it's always made more sense to buy stuff in the winter when you can actually work on things and not die of heat exhaustion. But apparently people want to sell stuff now. <laughs> and apparently not everybody lives in Florida. I, I mean, I don't live in Florida anymore and it's still freaking <laughs> hot. <laughs> uh, all right. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.